All right. We are live. We are live and direct right here on Instagram Live. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm your host, Shannon Matt. This evening, I will be interviewing the lovely Tanya Stevens. She will be here momentarily. But we have to give Tanya her flowers. I'm going to wait for Tanya to come in because I need her to feel all this energy. And we got to welcome her the right way. We have to. All of my guests get welcome with flowers and hearts and flames and all that good stuff. So please, please, please light up the comment section right now. Big up yourself, the sweet one underscore. Hey, boo boo. <laughs> if you feel inclined to want to tip myself and the DJ this evening, DJ Tandy, you can do so by buying a badge to support this live. And I thank you in advance for rocking with me and doing that. But, you know, we are waiting for Tanya to get here. So we're going to, um, you know, welcome her the right way. Can I get some flames? Can I get some hearts? And can I get some thumbs up if my audio is wonderful right now? Please confirm that my audio is A1. Please, please, please. Christopher Acevedo, what's goody, son? How are you? Drea Passion, what's up? Erica Allen, Paro Kid, what's up, what's up, what's up? Terry Maurice, what's up? Don One Lather, K Boggs 122, Miss Major Dimes 83, what's up, y'all? Okay, my audio is A1, I love that because you know the audio be a hit or a moon will be miss. Y'all know the vibes, y'all already know. Let me see what's up with Tanya. Let me go text her, see what's up. See where she at. Y'all at Tanya in the comments. Somebody said it's frozen. Ooh, is it, am I frozen? Spank just business. What's goody with you? Uh-oh, somebody said I was frozen. I wonder why. Why am I frozen? I should not be frozen. I should not be frozen. Let's see where Tanya's at. You ready? <laughs> I should be like, you're not ready for this yet. <laughs> And in the meantime, I'm going to need y'all to go and follow DJ Tandy right here on Instagram. <laughs> Check the pin so y'all know where to follow DJ Tandy. Rashida B., what's goody? Star girl Vivette. You must be Jamaican. Vivette? I don't know. No American people named Vivette. Every Vivette I know come from the island. Okay, so Erica, you might need to re-download your app or restart because everybody else says I'm not frozen but you. So it might be an Android. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> All right, so you know what? You know what we gonna do? Let's, let's, let's play some early juggling, um, or, or early tunes from Tanya before she, since she not here yet. Since she not here yet, let's warm up the people. <laughs> Hello, darling. Uh oh, Tanya, I know you're not on no McDonald's Wi Fi, sis. Turn on your Wi Fi. Turn on the digital Wi Fi. Welcome to your, your internet connection. <laughs> you there? Okay. This is what them box said. <laughs> they are box side. Okay, so we have a treat for you. I have a treat for you, Tanya. You know how much I love you, and you know how much. You are the shit, excuse my language, but you know, for lack of better terms right now. So we're gonna start this off right. So we're gonna play a new song, Good Good. It's connected with verbal. Uh, oh, wait, her connection is bad. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I wanna shout out everybody on the live. Buffering, buffering. You can hear us? Can you hear us? Uh-oh. All right. You there now. You good? All right. I can't hear you. All right. Cool. <laughs> All right. So I want to shout out DJ Tandy. DJ Tandy is going to hold us down. <laughs> we got to give Tanya her flowers while she is here. Smiling, doing the damn thing with us right now. So we're going to start it right. I had to start it off right. You see, all them other hosts, they can do what they do, but they don't do what I do. You feel me? I'm <laughs> asking her flowers while she's here. I think there's a lot of feedback right now. Okay, okay. We better, we better, we better, we good? 
All right, so please go and follow DJ Tandy right here on Instagram, DJ T A N D I. And now we're going to start back to and Moses. Do you have your drink, Tanya? Where's your drink? I don't have my drink. My bartender went on the road. I'm I'm so unprepared. I I, I miscalculated the time because I was thinking seven. Fine. I didn't realize we weren't on the same time now. You want to come back at seven? It's six twenty-three. No man. No man, my good man. They already my bartender soon. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm gonna turn it off. Never back up, bartender. Craig, can y'all hear me? Okay, still. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm good. Okay, all right. So what's going on, ma'am? <laughs> Why so much and so little at once? Um, you know, right now we are tapping into the innovative, the creative spirit of mankind because everything has been turned on its head and we're not able to do things the way we used to do them before. And we're coming up with new ways, mm -hmm. some of which I think I'm going to keep because I like the social distancing. Beg a drink now, please. <laughs> A cocktail and mimosa. What would be again? Mocktail and mimosa. Yes. And she will drink a mean and a drink. So may I beg you something to drink, please? Me no, rum in there, don't. Yeah. Me not, me not drink no girl drinks in a, my girl. A, a rum head. Yeah, I'm, I'm a <laughs> rum head. Okay, right. <laughs> what are you drinking? Yeah. What you having? Boy, boy, we need a place for check. I'll you know, get me some rum or something. And we need a place to go back to normal so we can do this in person so we can have the same that look that look nice. I know. I you that look nice. I've been wanting to send you some. I'm drinking Mozart. I've been wanting to send you some, but we can't ship to Jamaica. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. When the world starts act like them have sense again, I'll be there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I need I need to see you and meet you in person. Right in person. I was actually all of them madness here. Them this, this madness should not be divided on a screen. Right. <laughs> so wait, what's the vibes in Jamaica right now? The COVID. Vibe. Um. Well, you know Jamaica. Jamaica is gonna do Jamaica regardless of what's going on. So we have curfews, and we're approaching curfew time. Curfew is eight o'clock tonight, I think. Um. We had a few days locked on the weekends, but now we only have Sunday. They they. Cut it down to just Sunday locked. Um, and that's a no movement day. Other than that, we have curfews at eight. No no movement on Sunday. I think they, I think he relaxed it today and said no movement except for church. So church can go on. But uh, like I mean, no, we have a different spirit. Can go on and a sister. So but may I have a spirit in the house. Thank you very much, sir. Shout out. I don't know what this is, but I'm gonna drink it. Shout out to your uh, your backup <laughs> bartender in the building. <laughs> Big up my backup bartender. It is nice. I do not know what it is, but it contains the rum of some sort. Somebody I'm gonna investigate. There are a lot of people who are gonna give me flack for this because they're gonna say you don't know what it is, but you drank it <laughs> and you didn't question it. Yeah, because it's rum. <laughs> <laughs> and that the person that is in that made the um the drinks for you. Oh, that's my brother, Craig. Hi, Craig. <laughs> I'm just gonna be gone, gone. I'm not here. So lockdown on every day of the week. I mean curfew every day of the week and no movement on a Sunday. Right. That's where we're at now. And how long is that gonna last? I have no idea. Every now and again when the Prime Minister feels the whim, he gives us new times. It doesn't seem to have any logic to it. And all right, so let me let me clarify. Yeah. I'm not a protagonist. And a lot of people seem to think I am just out to get the Prime Minister. No, he's there to do a job. And when he does it in a way that doesn't make sense to me as a citizen, I question it, as is my right. Right. And this makes no sense. But, you know, especially when you lock the place, if, if he locks the country, no movement on a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. On Wednesday, Shannon, you want to see the carnival on the streets? You want to see the carnival on the streets? Because... Wanting people to distance, wanting people to stay further apart cannot be achieved by giving them less time to act within. Nobody with common sense ever thought that made sense. Right. And that's what he gave us. And so I questioned it. And, and I'm really scared at the level of complacency and acceptance from my fellow countrymen. I'm scared. I'm really genuinely scared. Because we're not supposed to be sitting so docile and just accepting stuff. Right. We have, to, we have to hold everything up to the light. And no matter how close a friend you are to me, I have nobody who is in, indemnified 
from my school mm-hmm. nobody my daughter my mother nobody me i i criticize myself the hardest yeah yeah <laughs> so if the prime minister does something that doesn't make sense first of all the biggest casualty from covid measures is the economy and everybody's personal economy people are suffering businesses are closing some businesses will never open again yeah they were suffering before they were just on the brink before people who just started a business who didn't reach to profitability yet people who just sunk all their money into their one bright idea right right and it's cool and and the reality is that this is not a measure that's applied across the board now when i see us applying something that that is that is applied equally to all of us then i don't question it as much right. because i feel like you really believe in this thing but when i see a minister partying in lockdown time no movement time a minister of government partying in no movement time and posting to no movement and then they give him a slap on the wrist they pretend to punish him they pull him back and then they and then he announces that he's going to give him a better job i'm like why don't you just hold the masses and just punch them in the face right it would be the equivalent that would be a more direct statement let's stop beating around the bush with all these just just punch them in the face because poor people they know this man is partying for fun and when people from the entertainment industry say open up the place they say we're careless insensitive irresponsible and these are people who have an income in entertainment this man does not he's out partying for fun for real entertainers don't party for fun entertainment entertainment industrialists party for their economy right right and when you lock down the j- people's jobs who it is to entertain but you and your friends can still have a party that smacks of hypocrisy and it suggests also it suggests that the lockdowns are not for any legitimate reason because if it was he would abide by it it's his rule <laughs> right isn't it the, the the pot calling the kettle black that's how the saying go right yes. yeah Are you regret voting for him mm? do you regret voting for him all right i said that when i'm i said that when i'm emotional but i don't i don't regret voting for him because when i did i did so based on all the information that was available to me at the time i'm not one of those people who want to cancel arkelis music i am because he did a crime uh, you are yep. you want to cancel his music no you want to cancel him i want to cancel him but i feel like right. i want to cancel him but i cannot cancel his music because his music is a part of my psyche so that would be me chopping off a piece of me i cannot do i refuse to punish me for his behavior okay i'm conflicted I'll just yeah we all are child we hey this man he, he let us down he, did. he, re- he let us down but we but we have to admit and accept that his music is not his behavior and i will never condone his behavior and if there is a uh, the harshest punishment that i could add on to his punishment i would but my playlist need to be needs to be complete t- and i need i have to remix the ignition i'm sorry jana we have to part when we're at a party, you just go on a bathroom when they play that because I'm going to be twerking. <laughs> I'm, jerking, I'm jerking like I'm twerking. I can't twerk, but I can jerk. Yeah, I feel guilty. I feel like every time I listen to Don't. R. Kelly's song, I'm funding his dungeon full of 14-year-olds. Like, that's how mm-hmm. I feel. Even though I know that's not true. But it's not true. I just feel like listening to his music just gives me... Uh, just a weird vibe but there's two songs that i can't i can't i have not been able to put away is your body's calling and um homie love a friend those are the two songs i still have in my phone everything else is deleted but those two songs jesus lord have mercy i am not deleting things i paid for with my hard earned cash true nobody can make me do that and and let me tell you you will never find a bigger advocate for harsher penalties and for bringing down sexual offenders than me you will never find i'm a two time survivor of sexual violence wow i do not condone that kind of behavior i have no forgiveness in my heart for him right. what he's done to those girls those women is absolutely horrific and unforgivable right but in the same breath if i'm ever in their presence i will not bring him up 
I'm not I'm not fond of him. I don't care about him. Yeah. But when I'm playing music and I skip across him, I, I can't play anything from that era without playing Kelly. He dominated the era. He did. He saw he was, for me to do this, this is a punishment to me. He was the king of R and B. Exactly. Yeah. And when he did that, we did not know he was doing that. I didn't know. Did you know? You know what? You didn't know. Here's the thing. It just recently dawned on me as an adult that when I was 14 and 15, and some of my high school friends is on the check-in right now, but it just recently dawned on me that when we were 14 and 15 in high school, there was 21 and 22-year-old boys talking to us. And we did not see, we normalized that. It was like, yeah, my boyfriend is out of college, yeah, my boyfriend this and that, he old, he grown or whatever. But we were being, they, they were predators. And I didn't realize that until I was an adult. And the R. Kelly tape, listen, that tape came out when I was a freshman in college. And I was the only one in the dorm that had a TV with a VCR. And the only one that had the tape. And <laughs> again, it did not dawn on me that, yo, this little girl, she's really fucking 14. Excuse my language. She's really, yeah. it just looked like, oh my God, the, uh, R. Kelly is peeing on a girl. Like, it didn't dawn on me that he was grown and she was a child. You know, yeah. so it's like, I guess maybe we were all in denial. I don't know. But just coming to that realization as an adult is really a hard thing to swallow because R. Kelly was one of my favorites. He's up there with Mary J. Blige for me, you know, so it's really disappointing. It's it's it, it hurts my heart. It hurts my heart to like really admit to be able to admit yeah. that. Wow. This was really happening right in front of my eyes. I, and it's OK for you to be hurt, but it's not OK for you to to carry the guilt of that. You didn't do anything. True. You didn't do it. And you didn't know. You know. And if you did know, if you realized, you wouldn't have um, agreed with it. But you know what, though? I think you can relate to this. We're both cancers. And you know we take on other people's life. Yes. You know, and, and I'm like that. Too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I have to... I had to start consciously um, counseling myself out of that habit, like carrying things. So we had a... So I was here playing music with my daughter and my nephew. And we're just having a good time, just playing songs. And then when we got to that era, it felt, it felt wrong. Because we were skipping the R. Kelly songs. And, we, and so we, we stopped playing music and had a discussion instead. And we talked about it. We talked about how we felt. We're all disgusted by him. Um, we watched the docu film. And we cried. We feel for the young ladies and their parents. We feel for everybody involved, everybody around him. Because it's so easy to judge from the outside, you know, Shannon. Yeah. When, when somebody has a job that's dependent on this monster, I'm not saying that they should keep their job and, and, and be in agreement with everything, but it's easier for you from the outside to say, quit the job. And who pays the bills? You're right. We need to stop doing that stuff where we speak in absolutes from, from positions which have no relative knowledge of what we're speaking on yeah. when it's like when people say oh if the girls didn't want bill cosby why did they go to his house listen first of all when i go on the road back in the day when, when i was on the road we all the artists were like a family and our hotel doors stayed open and we were in each other's rooms all the time i was in the man name room the man name was in a, my room we converged on each other's beds and if any two people wanted to get together there, we, we were all adults, so it was okay. But for the most part, what I saw was family. And we were open. And if somebody, if I had a headache and I say, I, I told my friends that I had a headache and they gave me a pill, I would take it. I wouldn't question. I wouldn't imagine that one of my friends, my family would do anything to me. I would take it. So the judgment and the guilt that we're forced to carry because you went to some guy's space or you listened to some guy's music or you watched a show. We have to put that down. It's not ours to carry. That is right. not your burden. You didn't do anything wrong. Listening to a song does not incriminate you in any crime at all. And the songs are friggin' good. I'm like, oh my God, Lord, please forgive me. <laughs> no, nothing to forgive. The music is good. The man is bad. The music is good. <laughs> We have to start drawing some lines because you know what? I'm, I've been watching us. We're, we're crawling down into a hole that has no return. We'll never get out of this pit that we're digging with cancel culture. It's Listen, we're not going to notice now. But in a while, you're going to see the damage this is doing.
this is real damage. Realer damage than what we think we're fighting. Yep. Because cancel culture is giving us real enemies. Real. There were some people who were bad, and now we're creating a real divide. Punish the bad person. Stop trying to go after every single person around them. Not everybody is guilty. True. Nobody around me is guilty of anything that I am doing. True. And if they're here, well, if, well, if this is my excuse. Hold on. Yeah? I, I, I'm going to play devil, devil's advocate there. R. Kelly had help. He had help. Oh, the people who helped, they, they put them down. Yes. They put them down like the rabbit dogs. They are, but don't punish everybody around me. So, listen, Ash, I am so conflicted. I'm, I think I'm going to forever be conflicted with R. Kelly. <laughs> no, man, Jesus. The other, it's not it's worth it. The, the other side of it, you know, his own sister molested him, took his virginity. His blood sister. So he clearly did not heal from that demon. So turned around and victimized other people. And and his neighbor molested him, a man. So it's like, who really is to like it deep? Well the big the, the, the biggest takeaway from all of this yeah. is that we have a we have a rape culture, we have a, a molestation culture, a sexual violence culture that we refuse to address. And the more we keep trying to sweep it under the rug, under the carpet, the more we keep trying to deny it, the more we keep being ashamed and afraid of bringing it to the light and, and discussing it and finding ways to get rid of it, it's gonna keep happening. Yeah. There is another R. Kelly right next to all of us right now. Because we keep not wanting, and we, we refuse to place the blame where it belongs. We don't want to, reverse engineer the problem and find the root of it. We don't want to go back to the beginning. We don't because it's uncomfortable. You know, we, we don't like discomfort. Right. So what we want is the, the, the cushion right now. You know, anything that makes us feel good right now. But, you know, look at how medicine works. It tastes bad, but you feel better later, baby. Just take it. Right. Just take it. That sounds like a perfect comment. Just take it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Can I take that back? <laughs> <laughs> no, but for, for real though, yeah. for serious, like we need to have these discussions, especially the black community, we're a little bit too uncomfortable with matters that really matter. Yes. We need to start having these, the, the, the pervy uncle, the, the mm -hmm. pedophile uncle, who I have been around my family members and they've had like informal meetings about a particular pervy, rapist, pedophile uncle, and everybody's talking about him. And it, I had my baby and they warned me, don't bring your baby over there. Oh. You know the man that they were there, we're one and going to lock him up. Oh my God. Oh no, no. And then let me tell you, the people around him, they act so righteous. Yeah. Righteous. Man, we, we, we're not going to start for our Kelly, you know. We're going to start in our own family. We have to start looking at why this baby is so pervasive among us. Because we are, all of us, we nurture that behavior, you know? We nurture, how many family portraits have that, that grandfather, that feel-up grandfather with a picnic on him knee? Yeah. Uncomfortable, and they keep telling her to smile. Or the Uncomfortable. The mother's mm -hmm. boyfriend. You know how many friends I have that told their mother that her boyfriend was looking at them or touched them? And I have I actually had one friend, oh my God, it's so sad. She told her mother twice. When she was younger, that her boyfriend was looking at her and and touching her, the mother spit in her face, uh -huh. spit in her face, and was like, oh, "My boyfriend wouldn't do that. You trying to break me and him up? Wow!" Mm -hmm. And my but it's deeper on that too, God. Because that okay. I don't want to say that poor mother, but that mother needs help. Something happened to her because it, it, there's a lot going on with her, and I am not. This is above my pay grade. <laughs> I'm. I'm I'm not a professional, but I know that there's a lot going on there. Yep. She has issues, and that's the only reason why she do that. Why she needs the external validation of having a man standing beside her. This is what we were conditioned to need, by the way. Exactly. That. We need a man. We need a man. Even It's women who condition us this way, too. Yeah. It's like if you don't have a man, you, you have your own man. Right. I mean, I, I've repeated that, re that rhetoric, too, because it, it, wrong. it sells it easy, okay. but I apologize. I'm, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> Or there's a change, man. I don't, if you're at a certain age and you're still single, well, what's wrong with you? Listen. Well, I'm, I'm countering that now because I don't feel the need to be any particular thing. Girl, I'm 48. 
Yeah. And when I hit 50, it's going to be a party. It's going to be a carnival. It's a bacchanal up there. I'm going in, guns blazing. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> <Bye>, please. <laughs> <laughs> I want my invitation. I, I am not going to allow anybody else. Listen, first of all, when I was 10, 15, the 50 year old women, they look like relics. And I'm not dissing them. They accepted the narrative that at 50, you had to look a particular way, act a particular way dress a particular way. Can I just say we're not subscribing to that now? Right. Time to do 50 is, is no longer that girl. Doesn't have to be. It can be anything you want. If you want to be the old marm, fine. It's your it's your call. Right. But I want to be the body rider wearing 50. <laughs> I want to be that. And I can't work, but I'm going to keep trying and I'm going to look stupid and I'm going to be happy looking lie. stupid trying to do it. It's so to lie. <laughs> we can't work to see my life. I cannot dance. I have two left feet. <laughs> With a knock me. Oh my God. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay to be happy and to be comfortable in your own skin. This is my skin. I'm not renting. I'm not leasing the skin. This is my skin. I don't have no, no, no guidelines to go by with this skin except to keep it safe and, and healthy. Right. That's it. And even if I don't keep it safe and healthy, that's between me and my skin. So, and that, that is the, the only rule I'm going into 80, into 50 with, well, I'm going into 80 with it too. <laughs> <laughs> How do we change that narrative though? We speak up. And when people come on our Instagram and they try to tell us that we talk too much, we tell them, we tell them, because come down in my intergluteal cleft. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's <laughs> Oh, people are invasive though and they don't know that they're being invasive so you have an Instagram account you go on an Instagram account you post your opinion and they come on it and count your opinion and debate your opinion and try to get you to retract your opinion by telling you that they have the right to an opinion yes you do but not here Right. you're not, you're not entitled to anything here right. you can be here if you want but you don't have to right. who's holding you? Right. you're not a hostage gun to your head yes you could be gone. Child, child, leave. Right. Don't, don't preach me this sermon. And they come and they post whole books. Like, am I a publisher? <laughs> they put the whole book underneath my post. Like, you think I'm going to read that? You think I have nothing else to do? I'm going to go put some harmonies on one of the songs on my album. I have no time for you. <laughs> come off of my... Can I curse here? You, you can't curse. Go on. You can't curse. Yes, I said you can. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm censoring myself. I'm hearing myself censoring myself. And it feels weird. No, don't. Because I want no. to cuss and it's not you. Man. <laughs> but for serious, I'm so tired of them. Listen. What happened? What you said? I'm tired of them. Me too. I'm tired. I want the debate. I want the conversation. I want the facts trading. But I don't want these people coming here telling me, oh, I used to like your music, but you, oh, so you liked my music when you thought I was a robot, but no, that I don't agree with you. Don't like my, the fuck off. Right. <laughs> All the way off. Seriously. Like, this is dumb. Like, why are we having this conversation? You're saying when I signed up to become a musician, I also signed up to not have a voice? This is in direct contravention to what I am. I'm somebody who lives off my voice. I have a voice. I have a voice. That's my entire job. And then in my personal life, I have the right to use that voice to advance my opinions and ideas. Exactly. It's not my fault that I have a big platform. Right. And don't hate. I use my platform the way I see fit. Don't hate on you. Like, like right before you came on the live, there was some girl in here talking about, oh, your language and don't you play any gospel that's music. Yeah, that's Bitch. Somebody said that on your yes. live. Move. Get out of here. This is block him. Block him. Block him. Block him. <laughs> we need that, that old 80s game. What is it again? Rock him. Suck him. We need block him. Block him. <laughs> I was like, goodbye, Alan. <laughs> And I deleted her ass off the live. Get out of here. Nobody don't need that energy. We rocking out right now. Exactly. This is my, pr this is my thing. There are m at millions of Instagram accounts. And all of them are better than mine. I have the worst one. Let's just say I have the worst one. Why are you here? Really dope, though. Find one of the other good ones, you bitch. Come off of my fucking Instagram. <laughs> Why are you here? <laughs> Who invited you? Who called you? Every day they come here. I don't like what you're saying. I don't like. Then why are you here? I am going to say the same shit tomorrow, so don't come back. Right? Just go. Who is holding you hostage? Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it. And I'm a minority too, you know. So first of all, among artists, I'm a minority. 